Hi everyone, welcome to Mind Work with Dina podcast, where we explore science, society, philosophy, and beyond. Hi everyone, and welcome back. We've got the consciousness series behind us. Yes, we did it. And I know at first you might have thought, what kind of nerd does a dry scientific podcast about something like consciousness? But yeah, I do. And uh, I did three episodes about it. And I'm now very happy to announce that we've closed the series. We dug deep, we explored, and now we're moving on to an important topic, which is artificial intelligence. Today we will dive into an inspiring topic, which is also very important to the question of consciousness, and it allies at the intersection of philosophy, science, and human experience. It's called the Chinese Room Argument. The Chinese Room Argument uh, was created by the philosopher John Saul. It is a thought experiment that questions whether computers can truly understand language or have a mind. In other words, um, the philosopher John Saul challenges the idea that computers possess genuine understanding and consciousness just like human beings. But before we get started, there are two things I want to define, which are syntax and semantics. So syntax refers uh, to the formal structure or rules of a language. So basically how symbols, which are words or sentences, are arranged. And semantics refers to the meaning behind those symbols. So the meaning behind words or sentences, the actual understanding of what a word or a sentence means or represents. Okay, so I want you to simplify the Chinese room argument to make it clear. And we're going to create uh, two distinct characters with uh, different names, which are Alex and Bailey. I've got these names from TGPT. And so Alex is locked inside a room and does not understand Chinese at all, right? But Alex has access to a book with instructions. And this book is written in their native language or uh, in a language Alex understands and gives Alex instructions on how to build sentences in Chinese. But like I said before, um, Alex does not understand Chinese. So Alex does not actually know what these sentences mean, right? So Alex is just following the rules inside the book. The second character is called Bailey. So Bailey is outside the room and speaks fluent Chinese, right? And Bailey writes down Chinese sentences and passes them into the room to Alex through a slot or a small window or something. And Bailey expects to receive a meaningful response from Alex, who is inside the room. But Bailey does not see Alex at all. Okay, so we've got Bailey outside the room, speaks fluent Chinese, and writes down sentences, Chinese sentences, and passes them into the room to Alex through this slot or window. And Alex is inside the room, does not understand Chinese at all, but he's got this instruction book. Okay? And what happens now is that Alex gives correct responses. So imagine uh, Bailey writes down a sentence like, what is your favorite food? And Alex replies, my favorite food is pizza. This is a correct response. Or another example, what is your favorite color? And Alex would reply, my favorite color is uh, red or black, right? These are correct responses. And so Bailey does not know how Alex is coming up with these correct answers, right? And so Bailey would think that Alex must understand Chinese, right? But Alex does not understand Chinese. 
Alex is just following the instructions in this book. He has no idea about the semantics of the words or sentences. Okay, so the whole idea or challenge about um, Alex uh, just following rules from a book without understanding what Chinese sentences actually mean, and Bailey would assume that um, Alex inside the room understands Chinese because he is giving sensible answers back, right? The whole idea represents how we often assume computers understand things just because they provide correct or useful answers. Another scenario is um, when you're texting with someone, but you cannot see them, right? And if they reply in a way that makes sense to you, you would probably think that they understand what you're saying, right? But the person you're texting could just as easily be something like ChatGPT, right? Because ChatGPT also gives you replies that make sense. And these replies are actually based on patterns. They have no real understanding of the meaning. And so you might think that the responses you get um, from ChatGPT are based on real understanding, but they're not. They are just based on syntactic rules without any real semantics. Okay, so what do we get from this? So we will see Alex as a computer, right? A computer that does not um, understand what Chinese symbols, words, or sentences mean, but when it gets a question in Chinese, it is able to answer the question in a meaningful way, right? And the philosopher John Saul, who created uh, the whole experiment, says that even if a computer can produce responses that seem correct or meaningful, the computer does not truly understand what it's saying, right? So Alex says, my favorite food is pizza, but Alex does not understand what a pizza actually means, right? And also, in order to have something as favorite, you need to be able to understand what it means. You need to be able to feel it. You need to be able to have this subjective experience. And here, it is not the case, according to the philosopher. Because they're simply following a set of syntactic rules to manipulate symbols, to build uh, meaningful responses. So it lacks awareness or comprehension of what those symbols or sentences actually mean. And this is the semantics of it, right? So according to the philosopher, they cannot achieve real understanding because real understanding lies in the semantics. And so therefore, a computer cannot achieve the true understanding of a language in a way humans do. This implies that even the most advanced artificial intelligence lacks true understanding because it operates purely on syntactic rules without any connection to the meaning of what it actually processes. So no matter how intelligent AI appears, it does not have consciousness or subjective experience that give meaning to the symbols it manipulates. Okay, guys, I hope this simplified explanation of the Chinese room argument has helped um, clarify the core ideas and there is much more to explore around this topic and um, I will be posting more on it just to keep the conversation going. And so feel free to share your thoughts or questions. Thank you very much for your time and have a good day. Bye-bye.